This one's called a casuarina or a she-oak. And what we're looking at here, some may call them the leaves. This one's actually a female plant. It's got little, we'll put a photo of those up as well, little uh, flowers just starting out there. And uh, the male plant's normally close by. Being an ancient type of plant, it's, it is what's called um, a flowering plant, an angiosperm, but it's very similar to gymnosperms in that the seeds or pollen blows to get here. I can actually see a male casuarina up there with its rusty red on the ends because it is that time of year. Anyway, the other thing I'd like to show you about these is that they, these things that we call leaves are actually what's called a cladode. And the word cladode means a modified stem. And the way that we tell these different casuarina species apart, sometimes it's quite obvious. You'll have the seeds, which will look quite different from each other. Here's some here. So that's the seeds. They do have different shapes, different points on the top. All that's easy to identify. The other bit, when you don't have seeds or flowers or anything, they'll tell you that you've got to look. I'm not expecting this to pick up on the camera, but I'll give you the concept. You have to look at what they call the number of teeth in a whirl on the cladoid. So you get your cladoid and it's, it's like these little pieces and they actually come apart from each other. And when they come apart and you have your eyeglass with you so you can look at them, if you look at that really close with um, yeah, a little magnifying glass, you'll be able to count these little, it's like a little triangle all the way around, little teeth. And you'll be able to count the number there. So for some of these species, they'll say, for example, nine to 12 teeth on a whirl. So that's a whirl, nine to 12 teeth would literally be nine to 12 little ones of these. So that then is one of the ways that um, botanists use as a key characteristic, because when a plant grows in nature, sometimes it's what's called phenotype, which is what it looks like. So sometimes what it looks like is different. It's different based on the external environment, how much shade it's got, whether it's in the sun, how deep the soil is, all of this can influence a plant, but there are still characteristics which remain true to that species. Things like the number of teeth, the characteristics of shape on those seeds. So that's a little bit about just one of our wonderful, very, very important and very special, very giving um, plants, the casuarina or the she-oak. Another thing about it is if you ever come across the wood, don't like to chop them down, but if you come across the wood, it's a good one to know that it burns nice and fast and makes good coals for cooking fish. And you'll find it grows near fish. The other thing that people say is if you're a child, and I like to acknowledge the first peoples who've shared this with me, um, our Australian Aboriginal peoples, that when children were lost, it was under these trees that it was recommended that they go and sit because the leaves themselves and the roots excrete a substance which suppresses the growth of other plants and the needles fall down and make a blanket. But it means there's often a beautiful big area where you get lots of these growing together um, that's very open. So if you're a lost child, you could sit there in the open. You could listen to the beautiful sound as the wind grows through. And it said that snakes don't like crawling across it. Now, I'm not going to test if that's true or not, but I know it's a good story. And if you told children that, they would certainly feel better to know they're safe from the snakes too. And as a mum, I'd love to think if I had to find them in the bush, I'd know to look for these. I'd know to look to find the open place. The other thing about them, I'll just grab these little nuts again. And again, this is from, passed on from uh, my good friends who live in Garamagal homelands, northern beaches of Sydney and around, um, that these were given to the young people. So you put it where you're sleeping and if you wake up with a nightmare, and actually Ani Fran Darawal also told me this, you can squeeze it if you're a child and it's said to take your bad dreams away. Now, you'd need to experience that for yourself for whatever reason. It could really take it away. It could press so much in your hands it wakes you up properly so you are awake so you don't just drift back into it. Whatever the reason, this is from this country and from this earth and it's a lovely thing to include in how we recognise 
the gifts that come from our plants, our Indigenous plants around us, and the traditional stories and customs of this land.